look blew it at the start gave away about two lengths creative flair broke up well stunning beauty though hustles up and takes the early lead. Dubai Love, the red cap. Soft Whisper, the all blues, a bit strong. Now raced up into second, just ahead of Dubai Love. Creates a flare on the wide outside. And a straight line for now, keeping out and trying to get handy. Then comes Silent Night in the yellow colours. Manasek is in the gold. Pevensey Bay, about five lengths adrift. Then comes Wedding Dance. Last look was next bears to Delaney Jujo. Is out at the end of the field. As they continue along and approach the final 1,200 metres. Stunning Beauty, the one in front. Creative flare has now committed. Winter up and now picked up the lead. The all blue colours of Soft Whisper is third. Manasek forced out a bit deep. Then comes Dubai Love, the blue jack and the red cap racing against the rail but only about two lanes from the leader. Soft Whisper just conceded a few places as did Manasek. Last look against the inside rail. Silent Night also gave away a few positions. Pevensey Bay is eighth place down the side of the course and about seven lanes off the leader. Wedding Dance at her outside. Delani Jujo needs to get past them all 700 metres out. Leader of Stunning Beauty got the call by three parts of a length of a creative flair who's in second then comes Dubai Love right there in third Manasek and the gold colours at the outside then comes Silent Nights is even deeper Dubai Love just uh, running on to those ahead of her further back the all blue colours of Soft Whisper Pevensey Bay needs a few gaps to open up then comes Last Look they went past the 300 metres mark creative flair now feeling some pressure as Dubai Love Pevensey Bay bang in the race Silent Night towards the outside creative flair holds sway Dubai Love, Pevensey Bay chipping away up the far side, but Creative Flair goes again, and Creative Flair beats Pevensey Bay, third to Dubai Love, then came last look, they were ahead of Soft Whisper, Silent Night, Delaney Jujo, Wedding Dance, Manasek, and further back to Stunning Beauty. Oh, she was really tough. They came together, but she saw, she saw it out very, very nicely indeed. Well judged right by... William Buick, and that makes it four in a row for Charlie Appleby in our balance sheet. I think you thought she was going to get swamped as well, didn't you, Richie? Yeah, it looked like she was she was there to be shot at, and um, she's such a tough filly, you know, and, and it proved, you know, she, she won over a mile and a quarter at Newbury. You know, they were there. She was there to be shot at when she, when she hit the front, and I'm pretty sure Will, you know, they'll be very pleased with her because... Will, by his own admissions, will will say he didn't get the best of trips around there. Um, you know, he was obviously drawn out wide, and it was always going to be very difficult to get in. And um, stunning beauty took them along from a from an inside stall. I got it wrong. I thought a wedding dance might have led her, but it was it worked the other way around. But yeah, she showed great resilience and class to to you know to pick up again and and, and out battle them at the finish. I think this race has been her her long term target. Uh, Mikey. She went over to America last year. As we said, she finished third and fourth. She was by no means disgraced. Last year, obviously, Summer Romance Althika came through this series, went on and did brilliantly in America. Will Charlie try that, or was it very much a case of get the group two when that's her done? Yeah, I, I feel like she's a filly that they're still trying. Yeah, I think the group two win was a, the immediate goal mm. for them. That's what, That was pretty obvious, especially skipping the Cape Verde um, at the shorter trip. Um, what they do for her after this, I'm not sure because I mean the uh, the U.S. didn't quite pan up for her last year, no, um, exactly. and they do have some rich races there for her. I mean, obviously the Justy Games and it's, I think seven hundred fifty thousand dollars, and and I think um, the the Diana's five hundred or six hundred thousand. So, I mean, there are options there, but you know, uh, she's one that seems to be improving. Maybe she'll put it together more better this year. I mean, it's 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 hard to say because she's not your typical flashy kind of uh, she's more of a, a grinding type she really yeah. gutted that out i do think she seemed to best effect when on or near the lead um which but she was quite wide actually early on in this race wasn't she yeah i mean she was she was drawn nine and it was always yeah. going to be a, a, a difficult task um you know i, th I thought soft wisdom might go for i didn't think stunning beauty would go but she had the inside stall and, and she was quite toey with ty so you know it was always going to be tough from will to get in from there um, and, and she still ran a little bit gassy, so I think that, that even adds a bit more merit to this performance because she's raced wide, she's ran with, you know, still with the choke out, and she's still been able to to find that little bit more when when they've come to her, and she's picked up and, and she showed great resilience and, and and toughness, and yeah, it'd be interesting because because she travels so well, I, I think America would be right up her street. It'd be mm. interesting to see where they they go with her back in Europe. Um, you know, but she's got that group two win, like Mikey said. That's and, the thing, and that's, she'll have a penalty for any group two assignment. You know, that's the important thing. 
Could she win a grade one in America? Who's to say she couldn't? I mean, the two fillies that Charlie sent out there last year won them, and, and you'd have probably said similar, you know, to them before they went there, would, would they be grade one winners? And, you know, they were perfectly placed. So I think the way she travels, the style of uh, uh, the way she races might suit out there. Um, yeah, it, it would probably be worth a crack, but um, I think Charlie be weighing up his options now with her uh, as to where he goes, what plans she has in Europe, or, or is it on the continent to, or, you know, if they try and, and try and get that grade one win. Yeah, because she's not going to be good enough and it would be a cutbacking trip anyway for something like a Falmouth. I mean, last year he was quite quick to dismiss options such as that for Althika and Summer Romance, who I think are probably a notch above this filly. So it will be very interesting. And obviously Charlie's not here, so we wait to speak to him at a later date about what the plans are. I'm really happy that she's won tonight. She's a lovely little filly. It was only her ninth start, after all. So she's possibly still learning and she's certainly not straightforward. As we said, she's got the hood on. But another well-judged ride by William Buke, who very much gets the applaudits tonight. He's had a fine evening, hasn't he? And it must have been a bit of pressure on him because you're, I know he's got uh, he's very calm and he's such a professional, but coming in and riding a horse like Hot, Hot Rod Charlie, you don't want to mess that up. Well, I think the pressure's something William's been had to, had to live with since he really burst on the scene. Yeah. I mean, from an early age as an apprentice, there was, there was always talk of him... Um, being one of the outstanding young finds so he's had to live with that early age and then he got the the job with John Goss and his first ride was for him was Dare Me in the Shima Classic he won on that so he's proven you know all his you know I wouldn't say critics because he doesn't have many critics um but he's he's proven you know that he's well able for it and and like I say pressure something that I'd say with the job at Godolphin that that comes with with pressure but him and James take it so well, and, and you know, like I say, they're both uh, very similar characters. In that they're, they're laid back, and you know, all they want to do is, is ride good horses. You know, and, and and as a jockey, you want to get on these good horses, and it's not really pressure. It's it's a privilege, I think, when you, you get to ride them. Yeah, he certainly charted a nice course round here on Creative Flair. He's mindful of getting a, getting across and not getting in anybody's way. Stunning beauty, said with Ty on board has, has gone forward. I thought Dubai Love was going to win it at one stage. She, she ran a really good race. And Pevensey Bay, uh, she actually made up a lot of ground. I guess they don't come back to you as quickly over 1,800 metres as they do over a mile. No, and like I say, it was a, it was a strange run. Obviously, she had, she had to, you know, come back, uh, you know, off the heels of a few of them in the Cape Verde. She's got a, probably a cleaner passage. I thought Louis Stewart gave Dubai Love a lovely ride. He was perfectly placed behind Ty got the splits when he wanted them and like like I say he, he threw down his challenge at the right time and it looked all at the at the furlong pole as if he was going to you know get a big big win out of her and, and obviously look full credit to this filly she's, she's picked up and, and, and gone again I thought Soft Wister once again ran a bit free with Frankie you know he, he dropped her in tried to switch her off but she was always just doing that little bit too much and, and hasn't finished the race off She's so small, creative flair. Daughter of Dubawi, out of a mare called a Hidden Gold. I remember very well, race for Godolphin. And uh, she's got Shamalal on the, the damn side. Another reminder of uh, just how she did it. She's the second foal of Hidden Gold. And a sister to the all, my, all weather winner, Secret Victory. Yeah, Dam stayed really well. She was a two mile winner. I'm sure Saeed trained her. Um, and a sister to the Group 2 winner Masterstroke and Group 3 winner Moonlight Magic. There's so much, so much stamina on the damn side of her pedigree. She should get a, a mile and a mile and a half, really. She should. You're just worried the way she goes about mm, her race whether she would, maybe. you know. Um, I think nine is probably an ideal trip for her. A mile and a quarter, like, obviously she's won over that, but I would say a mile and a half. You, you would. I think it'd be more about getting her out of her comfort zone you'd have to break her stride and, and she'd probably do a little bit too much that's why i think you know the racing in america is tailor made for because mm. sharp tracks tight tracks she'll always be you're always get able to get a breather into you know going around the turns and you know they're, they're fast run races and and like you say she's she's going to be a difficult one to place in europe as in she just drops below that that group one level 
Yeah, I think I think she is a little bit below it, but who's to say she might not improve further? It was her first run since September, and she certainly doesn't want for, for guts as we saw there. And Pevensey Bain finishing second has disrupted a Godolphin. What would have been a Godolphin? One, two, three, four, five. Silent Knight threatened as well at one stage, but she's finished sixth. She wasn't able to better her good run of last year, unfortunately, for Patrick Wall. And if their aim, if Saeed's aim was to get black tight with last look, then he'll be wishing he didn't run Dubai Love because she finished <laughs> third and she's already got the black type and last look finished fourth. That's yeah. no plans and all that. I think Saeed always brings quite a few fillies over and, and you know, like I say, there's, there's not many options for them. There's, there's obviously this and then there's, obviously there's the Cape Verde, then this. and Then you've got to go Jebel Hatter, haven't you? Yeah, you have to go Jebel Hatter and, and unfortunately I think a, a few of them would just be below that. Let's hear from our winning jockey, William Buick, once again. William Buick, obviously Creative Flair got her group two today. Just take us through the race. Yeah, no, she really deserved that. She's got some good form in the book from, from the UK and, um, and, and France. And she ran some good races in America as well. So, um, look, it was great to get, her, to get a, a great win next to her, next to her name. Um, and she did well. She had a bit, yeah. Had, had had a bit of a layoff, taking on fit horses. Um, so I thought it was a good performance. She's a nice gritty type. She really gave it to you in the end. Absolutely. She's really gritty. She's all heart, you know. And she races She races a little bit generous, generously today. Bit have been a bit fresh, but that's kind of how she is anyway. You know, she, she gives she gives her all in everything she does. Um, but, you know, when you ask her at the business end, she's, she's there for you, you know. So that's no, great filly, and she really deserved that. It's not a bad day. We didn't get to talk to you after Hot Rod Charlie, but that was a huge performance. It was a huge performance. You know, he ran hard. Um, you know, we, we turned it on from a fair way out. Yeah. But... Um, you know, I uh, I just wanted to keep it as simple as possible on him, really. Uh, he was by far the best horse in the race. So, um, look, a real joy to ride him. Um, you know, great to get the call up to ride him. And, uh, you know, Doug's horses have run, run well all night. So they're a great team. And, uh, you know, they ship the horses here in really good health. And, obviously, Hot Charlie, he's a class horse. And, look, he showed that tonight. You know, he, he, he had to be a class horse to do that. So you'll be telling Flavian, just don't bother, just uh, just stay home? Yeah, it's a long <laughs> flight. It's a long flight. <laughs> well, well done. No, thank you. Thank you very much. It has been a 